I'm Tanya from English Challenges and welcome! I'm so excited to share tips to help you sound more like a native speaker. And really this means that you're going to sound more comfortable, more confident, and most importantly, more like yourself. Hmm. So that just brings me straight into tip number one. My first tip for you is be yourself. A lot of times we focus on sounding like native speakers and in my experience, you lose a little bit of your identity, whether you're copying someone or you're thinking of a character or your teacher who helps you prep. So the first thing I want you to do is think about who are you? You know, a lot of times with my students, I'll ask them to say something and then I say, okay, let's now just say it in your native language. I may not know it, but I just want to hear it. And as soon as they speak their native language, their body language changes. They're more relaxed, they smile more, they move their hands. So these are really good opportunities to make sure that you're being you in English. So the first thing you can do for this is record yourself. Do exactly what I told you just now. Turn your phone on, record yourself on your computer, and maybe introduce yourself or talk about something that you know the vocabulary for, in English and then say it in your native language. Then look at the recording. You don't have to post it anywhere. Just take a look at it and see how are you different physically and how is your tone different? For example, I noticed that when I was trying to speak French, everything about my body language and my intonation was apologetic. It's like I was trying to say, I'm so sorry that my French is so terrible by using my body, by the way, everything I was saying kind of sounded like a question because I wanted to let them know that I didn't think my French was perfect and I wanted to confirm. But that's awkward. That's not real life. So then I noticed that in real, in real life, in my native language in English, I smile more, I'm okay with making mistakes, I laugh, I move, I mean, you see me now. So when I was able to apply some of that, in my very basic French, I mean, even as a beginner, it made a difference just by relaxing myself. And if I was okay with making mistakes, I tended to laugh when I made a mistake instead of cringe or apologize. And then the person I was speaking to would laugh with me. So it became a really positive experience. So again, so be yourself. And the way that you can do that is record yourself and compare how you say something in English versus your native language. And the second way you can do this is think about three words that your friends and family would use to describe you. If you're not sure, you can ask them. But typically when we take this, this thought process outside of ourselves, not what you think you are, but what your friends and family think you are, it's a little easier to come up with the answer. So do they think you're funny or serious? Do they think you're relaxed or maybe kind of shy? Do they think you're outgoing? So do you see where I'm going with this? So think of three words, either write them down or think about it. I'll be honest, if this is something that you're really serious about, I would recommend to write those three words down on a piece of paper, maybe a post-it note, and put it next to your mirror or your computer or wherever you practice English. This will help remind you that that's your goal. It's not just being like a native speaker. I think what we mean by that is that we want our English to be what we perceive to be correct or beautiful, but it's really important that you're yourself because that's what you're responding to a lot of times when you hear native speakers. It's not just the English, it's the fact that they're comfortable in who they are and they speak English kind of within that identity bubble. So you can do that too. And the good thing is it doesn't have to do with your English level, how much vocabulary you know. Like I shared with you my story, I was a beginner and my French was terrible. <laughs> but I was able to use these techniques to sound more natural. And that went beyond the pronunciation and the intonation. It became about the communication. Because remember, if you're watching this, you know that you're not studying English just to pass a test or so that you can be in a room by yourself. You're studying English because it's cool and you want to talk or you want to watch movies or programs or you want to meet more people. So you gotta use it. 